Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and in this video I'm going to talk about different identity models that are available with Azure Active Directory. So let's say after spending around 10 to 15 minutes on this particular video, you will have a fair understanding of the exact identity model which is available with Azure Active Directory. Some of the very common terms that you guys might have already heard is that there are certain identities which are managed identities and there is one more category which is called federated identity so these are the two identity models which are supported by azure active directory but in order to understand the entire identity architecture or identity model there is something which is really important for you to understand and that is how domains work in Azure Active Directory because this is something which actually contributes the identity state in Azure Active Directory. Now what do I mean by this? For that let's just start by knowing how domain works with Azure Active Directory first and then we'll switch to identity model. So let's say you are creating an Azure Active Directory or you have subscribed for any of the Office 365 service the very first page or the very first console on which you try entering a custom name that should be your tenant name the part with which the tenant gets registered so for example let's say i'm subscribing for office 365 service and i have chosen a custom name like test.onmicrosoft.com in this scenario what will happen test.onmicrosoft.com domain will get registered or will be available with my tenant so that I can go ahead and create users with UPN like user at the rate test.onmicrosoft.com so this is something which is really important I'll repeat it once again so let's say you're going to subscribe for any of the office 365 service the very first name that you use for your directory the same name gets registered as a domain in your directory so that you can create user accounts and this process is something which actually helps you to move on creating cloud identities so this is how uh, domain works in Azure Active Directory but the question comes what will happen if I have my own domain so let's say I have a domain which is conceptswork.com and in my Azure Active Directory I have to create users that should have username like user at the rate conceptswork.com so in that case what I have to do is I have to add and verify my domain conceptswork.com in my tenant so for this demo I have already added and verified my domain which is conceptswork.com so let's break it down and make it very simple for all of us to understand that in order to create a user that should have your own domain suffix present in the UPN or in the username you should add and verify your domain in Azure Active Directory let me show you this part on the portal and then it will make more sense so what I'll do is I'll switch to my browser and I will go to portal.azure.com and here I will open my Azure Active Directory for the tenant named as mkcip.onmicrosoft.com and I'll type my password now and I'll show you how the domain is registered where you can check that and how it is important or why you cannot just go ahead and randomly create any user of a domain that you don't own so I'm signing into the portal.azure.com and I have opened Azure Active Directory and now I'm clicking on user and let's say I'll click on new user and I'll try to create a user of a domain that I don't own so let's say uh, this is a test user and I'm trying to create uh, a user named as John for a domain that I don't own likewise uh, let's say contoso.com now the moment I'll click anywhere a search query will be sent and what is the error says here contoso.com is not a verified domain name in this directory 
Now, what does it mean that you don't own Contoso.com and you have not added that domain in your directory? So that's why you cannot create any user with this particular UPN. For that, what you can do is you can click on custom domain names and then you can check which domains are available to you so that you can create user. So mcasvip.microsoft.com, this is my tenant, the domain which was available to me the moment the tenant registration process was completed. And after that, I have manually added my domain conceptswork.com. If you want to add your own domain, you can click here, which is add custom domain, type your domain name here, and then click on next. So I'm just typing this for the demo. I'll click on add. It might show the domain name is added, but it is not verified. So now what you have to do is you have to add this TXT record or MX record in the public DNS of your domain. And then you have to come back to the same portal where we are right now and then click on verify. What Microsoft does, it actually queries the public DNS and search for this record, which can be either TXT or MX and verify that yes, you own this particular domain since you have added this record in the public DNS. This is a process which is uh, working and which, uh, you know, which is actually followed to get the domain verified. Now, as you can see that it is showing me here as unverified. So if I go back to my user console and if I again try creating a user, let's say with the same domain which we have added, it will not work because yet the domain is not verified in my directory. So if I try this now and I'll click anywhere, I'll again get the same part. Test.com is not a verified domain in this directory. So in short, you can only create users with the UPN or with the user principal name of those domains which you have added and verified in your directory. This is something which is really important because uh, on behalf of the UPN suffix, Azure Active Directory decides whether a user is a managed user or a user is a federated user. That is something which I'm going to cover next. And once you cover the entire video, you'll have a better understanding about both the identity models. So now, if we go back to our deck, the very first thing that I would like to let you know that there are two types of identity model in Azure Active Directory. The very first one is cloud identities. That means you go to portal.azure.com and you just click on add user and create a user directly from the portal. And the object that will be created will be a cloud account. Now, as you can see, this is my cloud account, which is global at mkcip.onmicrosoft.com. This is a cloud account. And as you can see, it is showing source as Azure Active Directory. Whereas this account, which has been synced from on-prem, would show Windows Server Azure AD. So this is a synced account. So if, I, if we go back to our deck, there are two types of identity models. The very first one is cloud identities and the other one are synced identities. Now what are synced identities? When you set up Azure AD Connect and sync all your on-prem users to Azure Active Directory, then the users would have same UPN provided you have already verified your domain. And this model is called synced identities. Now, this part, which is of synced identities, is actually being divided into two different components. The very first one is managed identities. And what is a managed identity? Wherein the authentication is actually being done by login.microsoftonline.com which is Azure AD. So if the authentication is completed by login.microsoftonline.com, it is a managed identity. Very simple to understand. You have not federated your domain. Now this is something different, which I have covered in a different video, and I will share that link in the description. Do check that as well, and everything will be in place. 
So if the authentication is done by Azure Active Directory, it's a managed domain or it is a managed identity. Now this can be achieved in two ways, password synchronization and with pass-through authentication. Now I have created a separate video again for pass-through authentication. I will be sharing that link as well in the description section. You can check that and that video actually covers everything that has been done while a user gets authenticated with pass-through authentication. The only reason why I have mentioned pass-through authentication in managed identities because this doesn't need your domain to be federated. The next part is federated identities. So once you federate your domain with Office 365, that means you bring a local on-prem uh, identity provider likewise ADFS, Ping Federate, or whatever uh, identity provider that you have. That means in the case of federated identities, login.microsoftonline.com is actually relying on a different entity to get the set of claims with which login.microsoftonline.com will provide a new token to the respective Microsoft Online service. So in federated identity model, the authentication is done on-prem a better example is ADFS. Now let's talk about something else and how exactly all these things work in Azure Active Directory. So the first thing that I would like to talk about is same sign-on, wherein the user objects are not syncing from Active Directory. So in this case, let's say you have a user that you have created on-prem which has a UPN user at the red concepts work.com, but you have not installed Azure AD Connect. That means you are not syncing this account to Azure Active Directory. In this case, what can be done is so you can simply log on to portal.azure.com, get your domain verified, which is concepts work.com in this case, and directly create an account in the cloud. But in this case, there will be a slight difference and that is since this identity is nowhere linked with the identity that you are creating in the cloud. So the password for both these user accounts will be different. So in these kind of scenarios, on a domain join machine, when a user is logging in, he will be using the password for on-prem, but when he will try to access portal.office.com, he will be using this particular identity. So this is something wherein you have same sign-on, that means your UPN is same, but you are not syncing objects from Active Directory to Azure Active Directory. The next example is when you are syncing your identities. Now in this case, as I said before, this is something which can be achieved either with password synchronization or pass through authentication as well. But in this scenario, I'm going to discuss about password synchronization. So what actually happens that when you install Azure AD Connect, you get the option to synchronize password to Azure Active Directory. And in this case, what happens, the exact identity of your user account with the help of Azure AD Connect is synced to Azure Active Directory and the user can use same identity. So in this case, let's say I have a domain which is identitycloud.co.in, a different organization which is actually using password sync to sync the user identities and passwords to Azure Active Directory. And then when the same user logs into portal.office.com or Azure AD or to portal.azure.com, they can use the same username and password which they are using to access on-prem resources. The third category is something which we call federated identities. In this case, what actually happens that the user can use the same username and password which he is using on-prem to access any of the resource which is available in Azure Active Directory because you have used Azure AD Connect to sync the object to Azure Active Directory and you are using on-prem ADFS server to get the authentication process for you. In this case, there is a slight change in authentication flow and what actually happens is that when a user will try to access portal.office.com, portal.office.com will redirect that request to 
login.microsoftonline.com login.microsoftonline.com will redirect that request to ADFS and then ADFS will get the credentials verified from your Active Directory and provide a new token to Azure Active Directory which will be consumed by Azure Active Directory and a new token will be provided to portal.office.com and in this way user is logged in to the home page of portal.office.com now this is a process which needs a lot of attention if you want to understand I have already shared the link in the description watch that video if you have any questions please get back to me now let's just quickly talk about the summary of this video that we have just covered and in this video we have talked about identity models in Azure Active Directory we have talked about managed identities federated identities and the most important part is domains because this is something wherein the Azure Active Directory decides what kind of authentication has to be done for a user so if you guys have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe, comment in below, ask as many as questions as possible. And if you have any suggestion, feedback, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.